Hello and welcome back to the game room. Well, this week we are taking a look at the first game of 2023 for the channel, even though I played the hell out of this the last month of 2022. And you already know what game it is. It is the title. We are looking at Vanguard Bandits for the PS1. A very obscure tactical RPG. Notice the little logo. It is another Working Designs Games. Yes, I did pick it up after I played Alundra last year. And it very much has that Working Designs sense of humor, which I like to say is a little mix of college humor and what you would see written on a bathroom wall in the 90s. Not saying it's bad, it's just very immature and also pretty awesome at the same time. Now this game is a tactical game, so it's already in my wheelhouse. It is 20 chapters, though there's actually 56 battles or possible chapter battles in the game. Though there's really only so much variation on that. So I actually went through and I played through all three separate endings. There's a kingdom ending, an empire ending, and a ruin ending. I did all three of them. For the most part, you're largely doing variations of battles in each three separate path. The kingdom one has the chance for you to get the most characters. Empire, I found, is probably the best storyline. You get a love interest between these two different ladies. And then the ruin one is kind of all over the place. You have the smallest amount of units. You don't get the ultra gunner mech. and Unless you know how to get Tidal Wave, the last couple of battles can be pretty damn impossible. And that's kind of how it is. Mission 19 on all three separate playthroughs are pretty, pretty tough. And it's funny because you, you run into the same characters in each playthrough, and sometimes you'll see events from each side as the story progresses. But especially in the Ruin playthrough, one of the characters uh, just becomes an, a complete brat and is way different than how they're portrayed in the other two endings. So it was just interesting to see how that worked out. Phenomenal game though. It really, it combines what I love about tactical games from the past, whereas in each chapter, you can only get experience during the fight. And the way it works is that the lower level you are, if you attack a higher level character with a higher level skill and you do more damage, the more experience you get. So it really behooves you to have your team all level up around the same level. And so you don't want to have an experience sponge. And then you want to give the killing blow to somebody based on what level that enemy is and the level the person is to try and maximize experience. And I found once you got two levels above the enemy you were killing, it almost wasn't even worth it. So you really had to plan out your attack. So it kind of had the strategy of an earlier Fire Emblem game with the uh, kind of the, the, the difficulty of needing to have the right person kill the right enemy and land the death blow. So that can become frustrating too, because you also, especially in the Kingdom playthrough, which is most likely the first one you're going to do, you have a lot of computer controlled characters on your team, and they will get the killing blow. And they're smart enough to go after the enemy that's injured, but they aren't smart enough to actually be a good <laughs> tactical reliance, which especially becomes evident on the other playthroughs, like the Ruin playthrough, uh, my god, Mission 19, you have a bunch of computer controlled characters and they're all stupid they're all extremely stupid so the positioning matters you when you attack you'll see how much damage you'll do you'll get a percentage of course like XCOM you're gonna be missing that 86% shot all the damn time they're gonna be hitting their 44% shots all the damn time now there is add a nuance into the game like the ability to knock down and things of that nature because I can't tell you how many times I missed 100% shots, 99% shots, still not sure how it happened. When you go and attack them, there's two things you have to factor in. You have to factor in how much energy you have. So when you get your turn, you have a blue bar that limits the amount of moves you have. So you can move a certain amount, you can act a certain amount. If you get later in the game, you can actually level up your character a certain way to allow them to attack twice. But then you have a yellow bar, which is essentially your fatigue bar. And the fatigue bar builds up based on what abilities you use and also if you defend yourself. So it becomes a part where you might be attacking an enemy that's 10 levels higher than you and you're gonna miss. 
but if you can put their fatigue up to where they're stunned, they then have no defenses, and it doesn't even matter where you're attacking them from because it's very much positional. You get a guaranteed hit from the back. Well, not even guaranteed, but you have an attack from the back doesn't get countered. Attacks from the sides get countered, and attacks from the fronts get countered in frontal, obviously being the one where they can defend the best. Uh, there's a counter ability that's almost completely useless. Avoid, where you avoid stuff. You have defend, where you can have the damage you get, but it also increases the chance that they're gonna hit you. And then attack, where essentially you can attack them as if it's your turn. And sometimes that's the best thing to do because damage is very hard to heal, especially earlier in the game. Like a lot of this game, it's one of those things where it starts off very hard. So that's why it's hard to unlock the Empire ending or the empire pathway because you have to be level eight by the time you finish mission three and most people are just going to be getting their feet wet unless you know and you've read up on what skills to take how to level up your character generally i love because you get the ability to put your points in the parts you want i just leveled across the board and kept everything even the different mechs you will eventually get will then allow you to uh bolster certain things like your your power your your fort your base uh things of that nature and then the different gemstone you use like these are mechs that are powered by gemstones will give you a different type of uh supplemental magic so the 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 earth stones will heal the fire stones are more damage based the wind stones are more distance attack based and the water ones are more about reducing fatigue and pretty much are the least useful in my in my, in my opinion and then you get specific units that have their own specific mechs and their own specific gemstones and really it's just this whole world is very interesting the story is very cool came out in 98 in japan and 2000 in america and is actually the last game made by human which i believe i've covered a human game before i think that was clock tower on the super famicom very underrated developer and publisher or yeah developer i like their games and i like this game a lot it's funny because it takes place in almost a, a medieval world yet they un they essentially excavated out these these mechs these big giant transformer type things and that is even with these powerful machines you're still or you're still walking around in some medieval world but they just people have mechs and the story I won't get into, but each each different pathway is very interesting. It all builds off the same. A lot of similarities happen, but it really, I was surprised. I expected, that's why I put this review off, is because I beat the first playthrough, and it's a short game. You can beat each pathway in about 10 to 20 hours, depending on how much time you take. In between each chapter, you get a chance to interview someone, talk to each one, that you bolster up your, your stats that way. You very rarely get to go to the shop, so when you do go to the shop, you need to make it count and there is a little bit of a, uh, a hindrance on that because if you have an item equipped onto a person and you don't have an item to replace that with, you can't sell that item and leave them unequipped. So they always have to have it. So you can get yourself stuck in scenarios where, especially because you only go to the, you only get access to a shop like four times throughout the entire game. Most of the time you're out in the field and you don't have that, that opportunity. So make sure that when you get to a shop, you fully buy out everything you possibly can. And then there's a, there's a kind of an accessory you can add that bolsters the armor, bolsters this, bolsters that. I didn't really find it all that useful or all that helpful. Really, it just comes down to it's a solid tactics game. It's got a little bit of mech thrown in. Now, I turned off battle animations because it it accelerates the game exponentially that way. I do that in Fire Emblem as well. Yeah, it's nice to see the, uh, the up close and personal attack, but really I'm just looking for the gameplay and this is one of those things that gets your mind firing. So I fully love this game. Had this been reviewed by last year, this would have been my best game reviewed for the channel. It would have decked it out with Vandal Hearts 2 and I think it might have taken the cake just because it really unraveled the nuance as I got deeper into the game, whereas Vandal Hearts 2, I felt I pretty much had it mastered and it didn't throw much new at me. But in this game, especially that second playthrough, you're gonna know, oh, we can overwhelm the enemy and then get those killing blows in. And it's just a lot of fun. Very cool to see where it goes. I Like Vandal Hearts, I wish these newer games would have this kind of design, because I'm playing uh, Diofield Chronicle right now, and it has that same home base where you then go through and you do all the same things you do in this game when you just have a menu. And yeah, it makes the world feel more alive, but at the end of the day, I I enjoy the battles. I enjoy the thinking and the strategy. I don't, I, I want the other part to not be as cumbersome. So yes, Vanguard Bandits, excellent game. Uh, it's another one of those cool things Working Designs does, they have different discs. So I have the one with the, the I guess the tan, I'm not sure what the difference is, but, 
it's exceedingly expensive. So that's unfortunate. This game goes for about $200 complete. So well worth it in my estimation. If you're a big tactics fan, love these PS1 games, this is one I'd say bite the bullet on. Maybe pick up disc only. Fully love having it in my collection and it quickly has rocketed to one of my favorite PS1 games. All right guys, that's what you get for this week. It's been so nice getting a hold of you. Please check out, like, and subscribe the channel. It's, you know, I'm really trying to hit 1500 this year. Hopefully, hopefully we can get more than that. So I'd love to have you here. Love to hear your suggestions. Uh, moving forward this year, I think I'm gonna try and, I don't know, add some more content, get back to, uh, get back to doing stuff that has me really interested in it again. That's why I did all the PS1 games last year. I'm not sure what the theme this year will be or if there will be a theme, but I'm, I'm trying to do something new here. I, I really, I really want to grow the channel and I'd love for you guys to come along with that ride. All right. You guys take care. Bye-bye.